previously on Alex Vision. No, you're not my brother, and you definitely don't know me. And right now, you are trespassing here. Hey guys, Alex Perry here. And today, I'm going to show you how to do this One Division Scarlet Witch Magic Energy Effect. Let's get to it. So, for this effect to work, you're going to need a few things to get you started off. First, you need a good clip of somebody looking menacing and scary. Next, you'll need a Magic Orb Energy Effect. It doesn't matter what color it is, since we will be changing the color of it to red in post. There are lots of places you could find stuff like this, but I am using a service called Motion Array for this. And finally, you'll need After Effects, and more specifically, the Mocha AE plugin, which comes built in directly to After Effects. And additionally, if you want to really complete the whole look of this effect, you're going to want to find some good sound effects and music, and I use a service called Artlist that has thousands of songs and sound effects, and they're all super high quality. So, you can check that out in the link in the description down below. Now for the example I'm using here today, it is from a sequence I previously shot for a different video that you can watch linked up right up here. It was how to do the black bars changing aspect ratio effect where the black bars coming from the top and bottom and they go moving out from the sides as well. That is in quite a few episodes of the TV show WandaVision. So you can check that one out for part one of this whole WandaVision series. So with that, let's jump right into After Effects and get started. So for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do it for one hand, but all you have to do is replicate the exact same steps for the second hand as well, if both hands are going to be in your shot or in your footage. So we'll start off by opening up Premiere Pro and dumping your footage in there. Then we'll just find a section of the footage that has a good shot of the hands that you want the effect to be on. Now I usually edit all my projects in Premiere Pro, so you just right click the clip in Premiere Pro and choose Replace with After Effects Composition, and this will open it up directly in After Effects. Then you'll want to start motion tracking the hand. So we can go on over to the effects panel and search for Mocha AE and drag it onto our footage. You'll then see this nice little Mocha logo in the effect control, so you can go ahead and click on it there. This will open up Mocha AE in its own window. Once in Mocha, you can just close any pop-ups that come up and then click Start. Then just find a frame you want to start with. I like to start with a shot where the hand is fully in view, so this may not be at the beginning of the clip. Once you have your frame, click on the Create X Spline Layer tool and start clicking points tracing around the hand or the fist. Just do the best you can, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you close it off by coming back around and clicking on the first point you made. Now you should see a whole shape and a new layer in the layers panel called layer one. So just double click on this and rename it something like hand or fist one. This will just help you keep track of which hand is which or which object is which if you were gonna be motion tracking multiple objects in this footage here. Then go down to track motion options and make sure they're all turned on. This is a lot of tries to keep everything from the position to the scale, to the rotation, to the skew and perspective all intact. And then you're ready to start tracking. To do this, click the right arrow with the T on it to begin tracking forward. You'll see how it goes through frame by frame, analyzing the clip and trying to keep the shape you created around the part that you want as it moves and changes. So if the hand or fist goes out of frame, you'll notice an error that pops up that basically says it couldn't track beyond that point because it lost track of the object. This is all fine, just move the playhead forward a frame at a time and move your shape a bit to follow where the hand or fist would be. You can keep doing this to roughly get where the hand would be when out of frame until it is back in frame where you can then just click the right arrow again to continue tracking forward. Once this is all done, you want to go back to the first frame where you started tracking and hit the left arrow to track the frames going backwards. If you get the same error pop up again, just make the same adjustments as you did in the previous step and continue until all frames have been tracked. And it looks like we're done tracking the hand now. So now we can go ahead and save this by hitting Control or Command S and then closing this window. Okay, so now that we have our hand or fist tracked, we can now add in the magical orb effect. Now, you'll want to place this above your main video clip layer. Then, change the mode to linear dodge so that it removes the black background and looks like it's a part of the scene. Then, you can just scale it to the appropriate size you want and place it somewhat where you want it to be on that specific frame. If it's not already red of the color you want it to be, you can search for lumetri color in the effects and presets panel and drag it on this layer. Then, you can bump the highlights up a bit, drop down the shadows a bit, bring the whites ever so slightly down, and drag the saturation down to zero. This will make it appear black and white. If you notice there's still too much white in the middle of this magical orb effect, you can then expand the curve section, click the point in the middle of this line, and drag it down toward the bottom right corner until you see less white and the whole thing appears to be darker. Then expand color wheels and drag the midtones almost all the way down, highlights all the way down, and shadows down just a bit just to add a little bit of extra darkness to it. Then go back over to the effects and presets panel and search for tint. Now drag this on the layer as well. And then for mapped black, you can pick a red color if you're choosing and make sure mapped white is set to white. Also make sure the amount is set to 100. It should now appear to be red. 
If it's still too bright or dark, just go back to the elementary panel and play around the settings we just suggested until you get the desired look. All right, so now that we have the orb looking exactly the way we want it to, we can now add and apply the tracking data to it. So we won't be adding the tracking data specifically to the orb layer. We will have to apply this to a null object. So to do this, right click in your bin here and click new and then null object. Then drag it up to the Bubby Magic Orb layer and rename it to either something like hand one null or fist one null, just something to match the naming that you used when you were in Mocha. This will once again, just be easier for you to help keep track of what exactly you're playing with here. Then with the null layer selected, go on over to the preview window, click on the red square and drag it in place on the hand for where you want the effect to appear. So if you have a closed fist and want the hand to be glowing, place it in the middle of the fist. If you have an open hand like Wanda has in the show and movies, and you want the orb to appear like it's manifested out of your hand, then move the red square there instead. Then click on your original clip layer, run up to tracking data, and click create track data. A pop-up will come up where you will see the items you tracked in Mocha earlier. So if you only did the one hand for now, you should only see the one item here, but if you did both hands already, then make sure you click on the correct hand you want to work with first. Make sure the little gear icon is beside the one you want to work with, and then hit OK. Then let's go down to export option and change it to transform. Then for layer to export to, choose the null object we created that corresponds with the correct hand and make sure source is selected. Then hit apply export. If this was done correctly, you should see all these little red squares and a red line in the path that the hand has moved and been tracked. So we're almost done now. We just have one more step left to make this magical orb also follow that same path. So finally, to get this magic orb layer to move to the track data, we'll want to click on the magic orb layer and right where we see this pick whip swirl, click and hold on it and drag it over to the null object and let go. Then make sure you turn on the motion blur option for all layers that have it selected and click in the empty box under the motion blur column for the magic orb layer. This will give it a realistic motion blur as it moves around. So if we scrub on through and play this back, you'll now notice how the magical orb is now following and moving in sync with the hand. And before we wrap this all up, like I mentioned earlier, if you really want to complete the look, you're going to want to add in some sound effects here. Like I said, I use a service called Artlist that has thousands of sound effects and music that you can use for your every project, but you can absolutely use any service you want like Epidemic Sound or even find free, royalty-free music off of something like YouTube. So for me, I just hop on into Artlist and search for things like energy, magic, spaceship, and whoosh and found these awesome sound effects here. Then I just picked appropriate ones depending on what was happening with the hand per clip. Since I made a whole sequence and didn't just apply this effect to one clip, I made sure to pay attention to what the hand was doing in each shot. So if the hand was a bit farther away and more stationary, I used a sound that was more of a hum and keep the volume a bit lower. If the hand was moving around a bit, I used a sound that had a bit more of a movement to it. So just get creative with the sounds you use. And here's the final sound design that I did for the sequence here without any other sounds or any other music. Check it out. And there you have it. That is how to do the Scarlet Witch magic effect from WandaVision and from the MCU movies. Now, if you want to do this for both hands, like I said, just follow the steps over again for the second hand as well. And next time I will show you how to do the red glowing eyes. It is a very similar process, but just a couple extra additional little different steps to make that glowing effect look on just over your eyes. And if you like this video, make sure you drop me a like down below and leave me a comment letting me know what you thought. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. Trust me, there's lots more cool stuff coming your way, so you're gonna wanna stay tuned. As always, I'm Alex Perry. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.